without understanding about speech or speeches. Speech. Speech is the expression of ideas and thoughts through articulate vocal sounds or the ability to express ideas and thoughts in these mad manners. To begin with, there are three general purposes that all speeches fall into. To inform, to persuade, and to entertain. Depending on what your ultimate goal is, you will start by picking one of these general purposes and then selecting an appropriate speech pattern that goes along with that general purpose. So I heard that there are some outlines of speeches. Yes, and this outline is quite similar with an essay. These are the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Transitions will be essentially used throughout your outline. Your speech will begin by getting your intended audience's attention, then to be followed by declaring its relevance and credibility statement. Furthermore, there are five parts of a speech outline. First, write your central idea at the top of your outline so you can refer to it frequently. Second, Verify that every component of your speech is directly tied to it. Third, label sections. Fourth, label your introduction, main points, conclusions, transitions, and bibliography. And lastly, full sentences. And what is the format of speech? Cla kindly read. It's... Each speech should be divided into three sections, introduction, body, and conclusion. You should create an outline before writing the speech. An outline gives a framework for organizing the primary and supporting arguments in the order you believe will have the most impact on your audience. Okay, let's move on to the part of speeches. There are eight parts of speech in the English language. Noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. The part of speech indicates how the word function is meaning as well as grammatically within the sentence. Additionally, part of speech is a term used in traditional grammar for one of the nine main categories into which words are classified according to their functions, and sentences such as nouns or verbs, also known as word, class, word classes. These are the building blocks of grammar, so speeches are all our oral presentations given to an audience often with a specific purpose, such as informing, persuading, entertaining, or commemorating an event. They typically involve organized thoughts expressed verbally to convey a message or express ideas. So, we, are, we already know some parts about the speeches. Any questions? Yes? How do you usually st start a speech? In conclusion, Speech successfully might lose the likelihood that your overall message will be favorable received by the audience. A solid start, regardless of the topic or occasion, can have a direct impact on the conclusion. Knowing how to begin a speech is an important ability to have, but it takes experience and theoret theoretical knowledge. Any other questions? Okay, yes. What's the best way to start a speech? Okay. Start your speech with a fascinating narrative, a thought provoking quote, or a provocative question to capture your audience from the outset.
Good day everyone. Today, we delve into the art of effective oral presentation, a, a skill crucial not only in academic and professional settings but also in our day-to-day -day interactions. Let's explore the key elements that contribute to a successful oral presentation in mastering the art of oral presentation presented by Group 1. What is oral presentation? An oral presentation is a short talk on a set topic given to the tutorial or seminar group. In an oral presentation, one or more students give a talk to, to a tutorial group and present views on a topic based on their readings or research. Do you know there are four skills that persona should have in an oral presentation and here are the following. Every persona has an importance so I'll call students to answer it. Supporters or relator, analyzer or thinker, promoter or socializer, controller or director. Let's discover their meaning and importance. Let's start with the first, the supporter or relator. This persona supports the speaker's point of view, experiences, or even, even emotions. It plays a crucial role in enhancing the quality, credibility, and engagement of the presentation. Second, the analyzer thinker, a personality type, style of thought, distinguished by an affinity for logical thinking, critical analysis, and the systematic method to problem solving. It plays an important role in ensuring a balanced communication style, ensuring accuracy, depth, and strategic insights, and effectively addressing the diverse audience perspective. Third, the promoter or socializer, the person or an organization in charge of organizing and marketing event, cause, product, or any idea in order to generate interest, support, and participation. It plays important part in our presentation by bringing energy, enthusiasm, and third personal skills and ability to connect with the audience. Lastly, the controller or director, the person in charge of supervising and managing the activities, operations, and decision-making with an organization, project, or team. It is essential for orchestrating a well-organized, coherent, and engaging presentation. Their roles include coordination, timing, seamless transitions, audience engagement, and dealing with unexpected unexpected situations, all of which contribute to the presentation's overall success. How important is Aristotelian rhetorical triangle? Aristotle thought at his Aristotelian rhetorical triangle that a speaker's ability to persuade an audience is based on how well the speaker appeals to the audience in three different areas. The logos, Ethos, ethos and pathos. And pathos. Considered, Considered together, together these appeals form what later, later rhetoricans have called the rhetorical triangle. triangle. So, so, what is, what is logos, logos in your, in your own, own word? word? Logos. logos. It's like, it's a, like a reasoning where evidence and facts to support, support one's, one's claim. claim. In short, in short it is a knowledge. knowledge. That's right. That's right. How, about How about ethos? ethos? Ethos is an estab establishing trust and authority with the audience, also known as credibility. Correct. And pathos? Well, pathos is the ability to connect with the audience's emotions, values, and beliefs, are also known as emotional effect. So that's how the Aristotelian rhetorical triangle explained. So let's proceed to another topic, which is the presentational style. So what is a presentational type? Kindly read, Soliano. A clear and organized speech style is used to present information, ideas, or content to an audience with the goal of educating, inform informing, or persuading them. There are four types of presentational types. Please state their names and give their meanings for each type of presentational type. Informational type. It is a speech or presentation designed to provide the audience with new and useful information, facts, or insights on a specific topic. 
Instructional type, which is for just specific style or method of delivering instructions or educational content. It describes how a program is presented to an audience in order to facilitate learning or understanding. Persuasive type. It is a common communication style or approach aimed at convincing and influencing the audience to adopt a specific viewpoint, take a specific action, or change their beliefs, attitudes, or behaviors. Inspirational types. It refers, it refers to a speaking to a style where a type of speaker who aims to inspire and motivate their audience in order to instill a sense of enthusiasm, determination, and positive change in their listeners and listeners' inspirational speakers. To summarize all the lessons for today, is an oral presentation requires an effective communication, structured content, and engaging visuals. Remem visuals. Remember that every presentation is an opportunity to demonstrate your expertise and then make an, an impression. You can improve your oral presentation skills and confidently share your ideas with the world with practice, preparation, and a commitment to continuous improvement. So, thank you so much and have a gr great day. And goodbye.
let's start with a short prayer by Jana Navarro. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless each and every student here, as well as our teacher, as we embark on another day of learning. Please give us clear minds and open hearts so we can grasp the knowledge and lessons set before us. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today, class, we will, we will embark on a journey to master the art of effective meetings. A well-executed meet, meeting is not just a gathering. It, it is a strategic collaboration that propels us towards our common goals. Let's dive into the essential elements that make meetings productive and purposeful. So next slide, please. Gabriel, okay. Definition of a meeting. What is a meeting? A meeting is a more than a scheduled gathering. It's a dynamic platform for communication, collaboration, and decision making, whatever in a person or virtual or via teleconference meetings are vital moments where ideas are exchanged, decisions are made, and progress is achieved. Next slide, please. So, preparation for a successful meeting. The foundation of any meeting lies in clearly defining its purpose and objectives. What do we aim to achieve? And how will this meeting contribute to our collective success? Um, excuse me, Professor. Why is it crucial to have a clear purpose for a meeting? Great question, Mantarala. Having a clear purpose ensures that everyone involved understands the goals, making the meeting more focused and productive. It sets the stage for active, effective collaboration, elect, elective, effective collaboration between the meeting. Create a compre comprehensive agenda. Next slide. Next slide, please. Anatomy of, a, anatomy of a meeting called to order and roll call. A well-crafted agenda is the roadmap to a successful meeting. It out, outlines the topic, allocates time, and sets pri priorities, ensures everyone is on the same page. Excuse me, sir, but I have a question. How does an agenda contribute to a meeting? Excellent question, Mahinay. An agenda keeps the meeting organized and helps participants prepare. It ensures that important topics are covered and discussions stays on track. And select date and time and location. Choose a date and time that respects the participant schedules, the right location, Whenever physical or virtual creates an environment conductive, meaningful discussion. Excuse me, sir. What's the significance of selecting the right location? Good question. The environment can impact the mood and focus of a meeting. Choosing an appropriate location ensures everyone can engage comfortably. <clears throat> Number. Invite relevant participants. Carefully select participants based on their contribution to the agenda. Confirm their avail availability and provide any preding materials to enhance engagement. Excuse me, sir. Why is it important to to invite only relevant participants? Great question, Kyle. Include only those essential to agenda ensures that discussions stay focused and everyone's time is used effectively. Hmm. Call to order. The meeting formally begins with a clear and assertive call to order. This signal starts with a focus and purposeful meetings. 
Excuse me, sir. Why is a formal call to order necessary? Excellent question, JR. A formal call to order sets the tone for the meeting, signaling that it's time to focus and engage in the discussion at hand. Let's discuss the roll call. A roll call confirms that atten attendance ensuring a quorum for valid decision making. It's the first step in building collective commitment to the meeting's objective. Excuse me, sir. Why do we need a roll call? Great question, Baran. A roll call ensures that our enough participants present to make the meeting's decision valid. It's a procedural step to maintain ac accountability. A moment, Professor. How can we encourage a culture of effective meetings within our organizations or teams? Another excellent question, DJ. It starts with our awareness and shared commitment communicate the importance of effective meetings, lead by example, and encourage open feedback, emphasize the value of everyone's times and contributions, creating an environment where everyone feels their input is valued. So in, conclu in conclusion class, mastering effective meetings is, it is not just a skill, but a mindset. By applying these principles and fostering a culture of purposeful collaboration, we can transform meetings from routine gatherings into powerful engines that drive success. Thank you all for your engagement and I encourage you all to bring these insights into your future meetings. So that's all class. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Today, our group is excited to share insights on a crucial aspect of professional communication, creating effective memorandums. Let's dive into the art of crafting a memorandum that leaves a lasting impact. Before getting into details, let's point out what a memorandum is. A memo, also referred to as a memorandum, is a type of brief written communication that is used in professional and business settings. Information is communicated within an organization using this concise document. A memo or memorandum is a written document that business use to communicate an announcement or notification. While memos were once the primary form of written internal communication in a business, they are now commonly sent in the form of an email. Why do we use memorandums? Well, they serve a multiple purposes. Memorandums are used for internal communication, conveying important updates, instructions, or announcements within company or department. They help maintain a clear and organized information flow. Now, let's bring down the not your memorandum. Immediately, it will need a more main component, the hanging, the opening, the money, and the loading. Burn, handing. Handing is the name to whom the memo is not run, from whom and the loading. Let's learn, opening. Opening briefly is the name of the memo. Burn, money. Money. Mani nun nay na may nun nay or na nay nun nay mo nun marang ram. Mort, note nay. Nun nay number right nay na nay mo nay na nay nun nay na nay nun nay na nay nun nay na nay Creating an effective memorandum involves more than just following a structure. Let's discuss some key writing tips. First, clarity. Use clear and concise language. Avoid jargon and unnecessary details. Second, relevance. Ensure that the content is relevant to the intended audience. Third, tone. Maintain a professional tone throughout the memo. Fourth, grammar and punctuation. Proofread for grammar and punctuation errors to enhance credibility. Let's talk a couple examples to better understand how to apply the principles we discuss. We'll analyze a well-constructed memorandum and identify the key points. For example, a, minute, a meeting minutes are a formal record of discussion, decisions, and action that take place during a meeting. The minutes serve as the historical document that captures the key points discussed and outcomes of those discussion of any follow-up actions agreed upon. Typically, a meeting minutes, a memo includes the following components, header, times and date of the meeting, meeting locations, name of attendees, objective of the purpose, a brief statement outlining the purpose of the meeting, agenda review, listing the topics or agenda items discussed during the meeting, discussion summary, a concise summary of the main points, Discuss for each agenda item, any relevant comments or opinions expressed by the participants, decisions made, clearly outlining any decision reached during the meeting, noting who made a decision and any relevant details, action items, listing specific tasks or action assigned to individuals as a result of the meeting, including deadlines and responsible parties for each action item, follow up. Mentioning any planned follow up actions or next steps, adjournment, documenting the time and the meeting was adjourned, signature and approval. If applicable, a section for minutes to be reviewed, approved, and signed by the meeting chair or another designated authority. The meeting minutes memo plays a crucial role in keeping all stakeholders informed, providing a reference point for future decisions, and ensuring accountability for actions, items. It's a valuable tool for maintaining organizational transparency and efficiency. 
In conclusion, mastering the art of creating a memorandum is a valuable skill for effective workplace communication. By following a clear structure and incorporating writing best practices, you can ensure that your memos are impactful and serve their intended purpose. Now, we'd love to hear your thoughts and address any questions you may have. Feel free to ask and let's make this a co collaborative learning experience. Salamat, Maria. Dagdag salamat, amoy na.
we're going to delve into the art of drafting an effective business letter. I'm Eric, and together with my colleagues in sequence of today's lecture, Nikita, Franz, Faith, Sophia, Margel, Ria, Roslyn, and Ash. Without further ado, let's begin! For our starters, what is a business letter? Well, a business letter is a formal written document used for professional communication between individuals or organizations. It follows a set format which includes the sender's address, the date when the letter was made, the recipient's address, the salutation, the body, the closing, and the signature. Business letters are widely used to send information, make inquiries or formalize agreements among other things. Moreover, business letters are used for formal communication, correspondence, inquiries, orders, complaints, job applications, and such. Now, let's move on to the next stage, the crafting of an effective business letter. Marjol, Ria, and Nikita will give us its parts and their functions and the way its drafts are created and then finally furnished. First, the business logo. The business logo is essential as it serves as a distinctive and recognizable mark for a specific business or company. It adds a visual representation of the company's commitment to its brand. Second, the letterhead. The letterhead is a section at the top of the letter that contains the company's name, address, and contact information. Third, the sender's address. The sender's address contains information of the sender. This includes the company's name, address, and contact information. Fourth, the date. The date is usually located below the sender's address and will serve as an indication when the letter was written. Fifth, the recipient's address. The recipient's address is located below, uh, below the date and before the salutation. This includes the recipient's name, the company name, the address, and the contact information. Sixth, the salutation. The salutation is placed after the recipient's address it is a formal greeting to properly address the recipient. There are several ways how to address the recipient. For instance, having a knowledge of the recipient's name. One may begin with their recipient's name, and otherwise, to whom it may concern, may serve us as an alternative formal response. The of the letter. The body of the letter contains the main, the lean, or the central message of the letter where the sender conveys the message. Furthermore, this is organized into a number of paragraphs, where the number of preference may subject to change and covers the whole purpose of the letter. Eighth, the closing. The closing is a formal way to end the letter. Common closings include sincerely, best regards, or yours truly, and usually ends with a comma. And lastly, the signature. The signature is located below the closing. The signature signifies both parties' professionalism, responsibility, or approval of the letter. To ensure your message's correctness, particularly on Grammar, there are platforms that can help you for that. You can use the Grammarly app, the Quillboat, and other Grammar apps. On the other hand, you can seek any friend for help, especially on proofreading and correction processes. You are also free to read articles about grammar rules, specifically the subject-verb agreement, the pronoun antecedent ruling, the commonly misspelled words, so on and so forth. You can visit our official social media accounts for inquiries, concerns, recommendations, and suggestions. This has been Ash.
electric when you kiss me never felt this way 